Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Slip Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes Now I'll do a little introduction but then I'm gonna really bore you. And I'm not even joking, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, but it's gonna be boring, both for me and for you. So, before I proceed, I'd just like to just say thank you to everybody that listens to this. Um, you're the reason that I make these recordings without you I wouldn't be doing them and doing this and the other podcasts gives me purpose in life so it's a bit heavy in it but hey it's true so and also a quick mention to uh, there was I got a message today an email uh from someone telling me, they're thanking me basically, uh, and it might not be for this podcast, it might be a different one, possibly the the anxiety podcast I do, but the, uh, the email was basically thanking me for helping her get through a really, really anxious time since, uh, had like a family tragedy a difficult situation going on so I won't go into details because it was a, a personal email if if I get testimonials oh, excuse me. or like public comments then I'll just repeat the entire thing and say who it was from but if it's like a personal email or a private message on Facebook or something like that or even a letter in the post I won't repeat you know much of the details of it um, because you know I don't really have permission to do that but I just wanted to thank the person and um, of course she might not be listening to this podcast it might be the um what is it called? Relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. That's um, just a different podcast. So thank you for that. If anybody listening would like to leave a comment, um, then please do if you, if you like what I'm doing. If you benefit or if you have benefited, maybe send me a message on my website uh, you can there's a lot, quite a few different ways you can contact me you can contact me by the uh, the form on the on the actual contact page where you just you know fill in your email address name and just whatever the message is and press send or you can email me jasonnewland at hotmail.co.uk you can contact me um, by post. You can contact me on Facebook, Twitter. Um, trying to think what other uh, Skype. You can send me messages on Skype. You can send me messages on uh, what's the other one? WhatsApp. Yeah, that's a. Um, so yeah. I do also have a specific Facebook page dedicated to this Let Me Bore You To Sleep podcast. Uh, So if you go to Google, if you go to Facebook, just click in or type in Let Me Bore You To Sleep and the the Facebook page will come up and it's a big yellow, it's just, you know, the yellow picture with Andre you know it's on the front of every uh, of these podcasts <sighs> right I sat down it's quite warm in here I turned the heating on because 
You know when the temperature gets just a little bit too too low to be comfortable? I kind of, it was getting there, so, which is, it's not unsurprising, I mean, considering it's, you know, late at night and it's near the end of September, but it's been a nice day, it's been a really nice day today, it's been, I suppose, overcast, but I don't mind that, I kind of, yeah, I quite like that, actually, for some reason, but, uh, it's not been raining. It's a nice temperature. I went out earlier, like late afternoon, about six or seven, six, something like that. And it was pretty, yeah, quite a mellow, a mellow temperature. Is there such a thing as a mellow temperature? So that's it. Um, what have I been up to? Well, what's really strange is I have... I had a meeting on Tuesday. It might be Monday. I can't remember. No, it was Wednesday. It was yesterday. The day before yesterday. Wednesday. It's now Friday. And it was with the like an employment agency uh, kind of like a place that can help you to get a job or you know that kind of stuff so I went along and it was 10 o'clock in the morning now for absolutely ages I've been up all night and the earliest I normally go to bed would be four in the morning usually it's more like five or six sometimes nine but that's not that often that I go to bed that, that late or that early however you want to talk about it and I wanted to go to this meeting, this, uh, yeah, it was a meeting, it wasn't an interview, it was a meeting, yeah, I wanted to go, because I requested it, and I requested it probably two months ago, maybe three months ago, so I've been on a waiting list for it, but I didn't know how I was going to get up for 10 o'clock, considering I normally only go to bed a couple of hours before that. So I just try, I tried to sleep in the evening. And although I don't have any trouble sleeping normally, I don't try and sleep when I'm awake, if that makes sense. I don't try and go to sleep at 10 o'clock in the evening because that would just be pointless generally for me even on a kind of the most average uh, sleeping time during my life uh, I worked it out my normal kind of time to go to bed would be at the very least 1 o'clock in the, in the morning and then I'd wake up about 9 o'clock in the morning that was without you know obviously without the constraints of having to be somewhere uh, so you know if I've had lots of jobs over the years and it, I've had jobs where I had to get up and be at work for half seven in the morning so I had to wake up at sort of six o'clock um, in fact so I, I need to. I, I don't want to keep. I know what's going to happen if I'm not careful. I'm going to start talking about something else, and I won't get on to doing what I plan to do. So I'll be brief because I do want to. I want to do this form, 
which is connected to going to that appointment. But I have really fond memories of, it's probably 1992, and I was starting work at, it was either half seven or seven, I think it was half seven, and would finish at half four, or something like that, those were the hours, and I'd do overtime, you know, quite a lot. I'd work Saturday mornings, um, overtime as well. And that was 6 o'clock till 12. So that was, uh, that was a big, that was an early start. But I did it, you know, I've always managed to do it. Generally, when I was younger. And I went through a period, and it might have been in the summer which would make more sense because it's, it's a lot lighter a lot earlier. But I went through a period when I was going to bed while well, I was waking up about four o'clock in the morning. And I'd watch television. And there used to be like comedy shows and I've probably mentioned this before but there was a TV show called Soap. Very, very famous uh, comedy um, show in America. A long time ago, that was when Billy Crystal was about 10 years old. It was very funny. Brilliant, brilliant show. And I'd wake up and there's something... I seem to be quite humorous when I wake up. Even though I'm perhaps a bit groggy, a bit... I seem to be... It's almost like the day hasn't penetrated me yet. That sounds weird, but I, what I mean is not, I'm not being uh, in any way affected by the day. Because I've not seen anyone, I've not done anything, I've just woken up too early but I was like oh so I'll be sitting in my bed I'll probably go for a wee first come back come back out of the hallway and I'll sit on my bed and I'd listen I'd watch the TV it's like it'd be uh, soap and it would just I'd literally be laughing my head off absolutely loving it and then it'd be I need to show episodes of Cheers, like old episodes of Cheers and like just old American sitcoms from I guess the 80s, 70s and 80s. That's brilliant. And then it's six o'clock or five o'clock, I think it was, half five or whatever, I go to, can you hear Andre? Why has he got to do this whenever I make a recording? He's been asleep for hours. And as soon as I make a recording, straight away, he's... And now he's going to climb up onto me. It looks like he wants to climb up and say hello. He's literally looking for anything that can make noise. Earlier on, okay. Now, I don't get angry with him very often. But today I did. <laughs> because I was watching Rocky IV on television. And I left the, the internet. Because I've got uh, Apple TV, so I've got a remote control for it. I didn't realise I'd left it on the chair or just to the side of the chair so I'm sitting at the table I've moved everything to the side of the table so you know hopefully he can't touch anything he climbs onto the chair I take no notice and just at a pivotal point during the film a bit that I was actually really taking notice of because it was a bit of dialogue that 
I can't even remember, but I was I wanted to test myself to see whether or not I remembered correctly because I've not seen that film for a very long time. What did he do? He pressed the button, which turned it onto the internet. Now he's climbed onto me. Hello, Andre. Hello, baby. You're right. Okay. Say hello. Give daddy kisses. Give daddy big kisses. What he really wants is for me to take him out for a walk. But I'm not doing that at this time of night. I'm not walking around in the dark. The street lights go off at about 12 or half 12. Never used to, you know. It's only recently, like I think 10 years ago, or you know, when I was younger, the street lights used to be on all night until it got light again. Now, they go off early. Don't they, Andre? You know, I said to Andre uh, the other day, I said, you know, you keep climbing up on me when I'm making recordings. I said, is it because you want to make your own podcast? And he said, no, I don't think I could do that. I said, of course you could. He said, no, but I don't think I could. I said, why? He said, I'm just not that boring. How insulting. He is really rude sometimes. Honestly, you see pictures of him. And it looks like the most beautiful, cutest little thing in the world. And he is, you know. To me, he is. Just like all all babies are beautiful to the to their owners, aren't they? Well no, parents I suppose. Owners not not a good good word, is it? Parents. And he's beautiful to me. But he's naughty. Very, very naughty sometimes. So now what he likes, he's laying in my arms, I'm cuddling him. He's laying on one side, he's got his eyes closed, and I'm scratching his ear, which he really likes because he can't he can't do it himself. It seems like the only one of the only places he can't reach is inside his ear. And he likes to me to stroke underneath his chin as well. Because when I do, when I like press my finger against his ear, he presses his head against it. Almost like deeper, deeper. Like he wants me to get right in there and get all that earwax out. Sometimes it feels weird though that I've got him here because I've had him for four years now. It was the end of September, four years ago. Those four years is just. <sighs> He's gone now. It's, it, it's just. All I can say really to you now, right now, is I know we're 20 minutes in, but there's a chance he's really playing up, so there, it's not going to be completely silent, as you probably realised, but in the middle of a sentence and I've forgotten what it is so I was saying uh, and then my, oh yeah four years I almost feel as if these have been my most productive years making recordings especially the last two years 
since I started doing these podcasts, the yeah, sort of especially like the deep sleep whisper hypnosis ones, because that was originally just a seven day podcast. And it became popular and I started adding more. And now I've got 149 episodes. And this Let Me Boy to Sleep, completely new. I hadn't done anything like this before. Not purposely, anyway. I've done lots of boring stuff by accident. So now this is 200 and I don't know how many episodes there are. 200. 30 is it or more something as well as what other new things have I done oh the the anxiety podcast that is again that started off at being 36 or 34 recordings and then that got popular so I started adding extra ones to that the same with the Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. That was originally, I think, seven episodes. So I started adding to that, and that's that's got popular. So it's kind of, I sometimes think, I'd like to do a diff, like a new podcast. You know, add in, add, you know, as in addition, something new, but I don't know what. Oh, maybe I'll just keep keep just keep doing this. But I think last year and this year I've really increased the amount of uh, recordings that I've done. Increased my output more this year than ever before, I would say. Uh, but last year was pretty good as well. And I've become more it's become more noticeable as I've been adding the dates to each new recording so I can look and think wow I've done quite a bit this year so I'm quite you know I'm quite pleased but which kind of brings me on to what I was going to talk about to start with so I went to this meeting and it was it was with the mental health team that sent me that that I got it because uh, I got bipolar. For those that don't know, and so I went along. But they had the meeting in the mental health unit, like the place where people, the psychiatric unit. I don't know what the correct term is these days, but so I went in there. I only been in there once, and that was when I was originally diagnosed with bipolar uh, back in December two thousand and eleven, I think it was. And I've not been back since, not to that building. So I went there, and it was just a bit strange. I went to the reception and you know the door just opened walked in and I said to the lady I showed her the letter that I had and she said sign in I did and she said go through that door turn go through that yeah turn right go through that door I did and I'm just in a hallway and there's someone working I said I suppose you're going to help me just been told to come here and I'm in a hallway there's nothing here she said oh we'll just go down there turn right and there's a, a waiting area so I did that so I'm sitting there and there's some distressed people waiting also to be seen so I kind of felt a little bit out of place because I wasn't I don't know because I was there for that's a very different reason f well, who knows why anyone's there I don't know what people were there for but I just I 
don't know, I just didn't... I didn't like going there the first time either, to be fair. But the first time I went there, when I got diagnosed, while I was waiting there, there was uh, a young lady, and she was smiling at me in, uh, all the way through, like while I was waiting to be seen, so I, I didn't know if I had a bogey, or, I don't know, just forgot to do me flies up or something. So eventually someone came out and got me and took me into a room and a light was flickering because it was raining outside it was quite dull it was a lot of even though it was 10 o'clock in the morning it was still quite dull not a lot of sunlight and the light was flickering I said like I can't that's doing me in. so she went and turned it off it was really just sort of like all I could focus on she said, you're crazy. I said, you can't call me crazy. She said, it's it's okay, it's in your file. That's what you're diagnosed as. I said, no, no, she didn't say this. I'm, I'm making it up. So she said, what do you want to do then? I thought, oh, what? This isn't a date. I don't know. And she said, what would you want to do? It's like, what, what would you... What do you need help with? Because that, that was the reason I was going there, to seek advice and help. And I said, I don't know. I said, I kind of like to know what the op- options are. And she said, well, there's... Um, we can help you to try and get back to work. We can help you if you wanted to start a business. You could help you uh, like signpost into different places that give you other advice. We can help you go to courses, to help you to do a CV, you know. And I said, well, can you help me to sit in a comfortable chair? And she said, no. The reason we, they're not comfortable because we don't want people to stay. We want you to leave very soon. Don't want you getting comfortable. Again, that didn't happen. And she... I said, I don't know. I said, I need to know what the options are. And she said, well, I can't give you all the options because we'd be here all day. I said, I know, but... Like, what courses do you have available? And again, I can't give you all the courses because there's too many. And the way I seem to work, I'm saying the word seem because I don't want to limit myself to, you know, this is how I am and that's it. And I'm never going to change because I don't believe that. We all change constantly. But so... However, I do prefer to have things listed. At the same time, I don't always find it easy to choose. So if I go into a restaurant, let's say me and you were going to a restaurant together, and they had a lot of, you know, they had a big menu. I don't mean big physically that you need a crane to lift it. I'm just saying like a, like a lot of uh, choices. Nearly every time I've ever gone into a restaurant, the other person I'm with has always decided what they want before me. And I'm looking through the stuff. So if I was with you, and we'd kind of met for the first time, if you was a vegetarian, then I would pretty much eat a vegetarian meal. Or if you was a vegan, I'd eat a vegan meal. I try and, you know, do that if I'm with people that... Um, but I wouldn't do that if I was a vegan and you were eating meat. I wouldn't eat meat. I have been a vegetarian and a vegan at different times in my life. I was a vegetarian for quite a while. Lost loads of weight. Maybe I should do that again. I felt so weak, though. I really did. 
<laughs> it's ridiculous, seriously. I just, because I wasn't eating well. I, I was basically living off of, um, like Meals for One from Marks and Spencers. And all I seem to buy is just those meal for ones and toilet paper. That was kind of all I seem to spend my money on. But I uh, also stopped eating chocolate. Here's a thing, all right, completely irrelevant, but most things are that I talk about. The it, I stopped eating chocolate in. August 2004 I don't mean till now because there's no way you'd look at me and think I bet he doesn't eat chocolate no you wouldn't you'd probably think eh, just 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 assume that I do even though I don't know I do I do eat chocolate I've, I've got a sweet tooth I don't I'm not, I haven't got a bitter tooth anymore Maybe it's because I'm not bitter inside. <laughs> There's no correlation that I know that. I, I can't really do lager. It's like I've almost regressed back to childhood where wine and lager just taste horrible. And Coca-Cola and fizzy drinks and chocolate taste nice. It's, it's a weird one, isn't it? Anyway. I stopped eating chocolate, uh, mainly for health reasons, because I had a lot of anxiety and panic at that time, and I was trying to find ways of stopping the, I felt almost like I was getting sugar rushes, and I was so sensitive physically to everything at the time, and by the way, that was, that's the squeaky chair making that noise was my shoulder rubbing against the squeaky chair that made that noise but it wasn't me because I don't make any noises well sometimes I do I got a friend who uh, always whenever he meditates or you know I've not I've not really seen him for quite a while but his stomach just starts churning like <laughs> It's like what? It's just something that happens, and it's and it's strange. We've all got those little little tweaks and twocks and bings and bongs that happen with us. Like, so I am I. I don't know why this is, but one of my happiest memories with my nan, and um, well, just my, one of my happiest Christmas memories as an adult was 2004, because I just got a new job. I'd been working part time and got you know just I'd been ill for quite a while, but many I got a job in. Uh, September 2004 and then in December 2004 I went and stayed at my nan's for Christmas and my auntie and my uncle were there as well and I went to my dad's for Christmas day dinner I'm not sure if my nan came or she stayed with my aunt and uncle and had Christmas dinner there and then came over for Boxing Day I'm not, something like that But so I was at my dad's for Christmas dinner and then I came back and stayed, you know, Christmas evening with my nan and had Boxing Day wherever, I can't remember but what was really cool is I got there early uh, I don't know, if I worked I think I worked on that day and I yeah I'm just trying to remember because I had that job from September 2004 
until June 2007. So I was there for a while and I had days off. So I did, yeah, so I, the place wasn't open Christmas Day or Boxing Day and then it was open again, you know, the following day probably. So I was at my nan's and on Christmas Eve, never really, as an adult, enjoyed Christmas Eve particularly because it's just been... I don't know, you know, Christmas really starts Christmas Day, generally, you know. But my auntie and uncle had a different routine. So in the past, I'd gone to Midnight Mass with my nan um, quite a few times because uh, I wanted to make sure, yeah, I'd walk home with her and uh, walk there and walk home and then I'd either stay at her house or go to my dad's and stay there or go home you know for when I was living there I used to in the town I you know go home so I went to midnight mass with her but it was not midnight anymore they stopped doing it at midnight it was something like nine o'clock in the evening so we went to midnight mass at nine and then we came home and my nan uh, was, she wasn't able to walk much anymore. So she got a lift there. We got a lift there on by my auntie and then we got a lift back at 10 o'clock or half 10 or whatever time we finished. And when we got back, my auntie and uncle were talking about going to proper midnight mass, you know, like at midnight at another church. But bef and I was thinking of going with them, possibly, because, I don't know, just something to do, isn't it? Because if you, if you watch telly at midnight on Christmas Eve, it's just midnight mass on telly. So, well, not on every channel, but at my nan's it would be, because that's what she'd have on there. But, coming to the real reason why I mention this is what they did is they gave each other presents on Christmas Eve off of the Christmas tree and also had some uh, what's that Christmas drink is it eggnog or it might not be it might be Nicknock it might have been the other one the something wine um, I forget what it's called but it's one of those so I had a bit of that and they gave me a present off the tree which I didn't even know it's not that I didn't know it existed I knew the tree existed I knew the presence existed I just didn't know that there was a custom of giving presents off the tree on Christmas Eve because when I was a child I think we used to have presents off the tree on possibly Boxing Day like some little presents or even further up maybe New Year's Day I say further up like when I was a, like a child and I'd be there every day because when I when I visit, or I haven't done it for a few years now, um, because I got Andre, I can't leave him on his own. I don't want to leave him on his own, and I don't want to. I don't want to spend any time away from him. Not Christmas. I never understood the, the concept of if you're with someone all year round, every day of the year. And then when it came to a special event, like, it's not Christmas, not for everyone, but for me, for, you know, my kind of culture, whatever Christmas, or whatever religion uh, thing it is, why would you want to not be with the person you're with every day of the year? Unless, I suppose, you know, I suppose some, some people, but, 
I want him with me. I want Andre with me on Christmas morning. You know, ideally I want it to be snowing outside and I want to take him for a walk and drag him through the snow. Maybe get a little sleigh sh shed, not shed. Sleigh shed? Sleigh shed? 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 Sled? Sleigh s Slay sled? Snow sled? Sleigh? Sled slow? I don't know. You know. A little bit of plastic for him to sit on. And I thought that would be quite cool. I have taken him out in the snow before. He does like it. He really does. Which is kind of weird. Um, considering he doesn't like water. If water's in the form of snow, he's happy to run through it. You see his little tail sticking up as he runs through it. It's just very cute. Anyway, the... Um, As well as having these presents on Christmas Eve, we had some chocolates. In fact, no, the chocolates were the presents. So I had these chocolates, and some of it was like sparkling chocolate. Um, like you put it in your mouth, you, well, like most things that you eat. You put it in your mouth and you, you know, chew. But these kind of had like sparkling bits popping out. It's, it's kind of weird, but... Um, I got a real buzz from it because I hadn't had any chocolate for a couple of months. And to start with, I thought, no, I, I don't eat chocolate anymore. I'll go on, have you, a little bit won't hurt. I said, oh, sorry, because I've already got it in my mouth eating it. And I was like, okay then, okay, I'll, I'll try some more then. Oh, it's lovely. So nice, so nice. Really enjoyed it, and it was almost like the perfect Christmas. In some ways, you know, I saw my nan stayed at my nan's house. Well, her, her, yeah, her house. It was the last time ever that I stayed at her house because she moved into sheltered accommodation so I think that was the last time I ever stayed there but yeah also yeah because from 2005 onwards she always went to meet auntie's uncles for Christmas so pretty much for nine years I didn't see her at Christmas I'd go and see her before Christmas and that was it. Never spent Christmas with her because she was up at me aunt and uncle's for some reason. And so, two thousand and four Christmas has a you know, very yeah, very lovely memory. Very weird, very weird year that was, two thousand and four for me. But. The Christmas was just special. But the eating the chocolate bits, that was good. So, that wasn't really what I wanted to talk about. And I managed to go 43 minutes. So, let's have a quick drink there. So I've got an envelope here. So the lady that I spoke to in this meeting, um, eventually I said to her, I wanted to, I think I asked her, I'm not able to be self-employed and still keep my benefits. And she said, yes, you are. And I said, in that case, that's what I want to do. I want to be. I want to start my own business, which is what I wanted to start with, but I just didn't know what the rules was for that stuff when it comes to benefits and things like that. And she, she sort of said, "Yeah, okay." And I, I said, "Well, 
the only thing that I think about really is this online stuff that I do, you know, free hypnosis service and sleep sessions and stuff. I don't know what to call it anymore, but you know, the this. And she said, Well, you've clearly got the passion. I said, oh, I'm very passionate. She said, I can see that. And I said, uh, So there's rules. There's rules. And she said, What you need to do is first of all, she gave me a, um, a pamphlet for a business. You know, come out running around again. He's lost my train of thought, which can only be a good thing. She gave there's a business organization, a company that get I suppose they get funded by the government, but they offer business courses. And I called them up and I've booked myself on a one to one with them. And I get the first three for free, because it's funded. And then if I want any more one-to-ones, it costs £45. So hopefully I won't need any more than the three that I'm getting, because I can't afford that. And then I put myself on two courses, two business courses. One for creativity, and another one for actually setting a business up and it's something like six evenings or one 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 evening a week for six weeks something like that which starts in October or they're both one's a two day thing and one's a six week thing so that's booked so that's all kind of sorted Um, I actually received a reply from the university uh, for the university master's degree course that I applied for so it's all being processed now and I should know within a couple of weeks uh, what the results are of that so before Christmas well actually before the end of October I should have have like the the master's degree sorted out uh, the funding for it sorted out Hope, you know, hopefully it'll all be accepted and fine and then the I might have to go for an interview for the you know before being accepted on the course but in all fairness if I have an interview then I'll get on the course because they'll see now Andre's climbing through his plastic tunnel why why can't you just go to sleep So I should have that information sorted out and I'll be doing the, I'll have finished, yeah, and I'll be like halfway through these, uh, the business course as well. And that should all be done by Christmas, which means I'll start the new year in January doing a master's degree in positive psychology and also working on getting this business started now I'm in quite a good position in a sense of I'm not starting something from scratch I'm basically continuing with something that I've been doing for 13 years Does anybody want a ferret? 
because I've got one for sale. In fact, I've got one and I'll give you a hundred pound for him. Please take him. He's so noisy sometimes. So yeah, that should be good. And so that's the whole thing with that. And she also said to me, you need to contact the benefits agency to find out what you're allowed to do, what hours you're allowed to work, and all that stuff. And uh, because generally for working, like with self employed, it's quite straightforward. You're allowed to work up to 16 hours a week, no more than 16 hours one minute over 16 hours and your benefits stop that's how strict they are um, strict, pathetic I don't know there's, there's, a, there's a kind of mixture there but she's um, so you have to prove the hours you do which you can because you get pay slip with hours on it and you can earn up to £131, something like that, but no more, or your benefits stop. <laughs> but you can keep the £131, which is a big boost, you know. So, Andre's now trying to climb up on me. Are you trying to climb up? Oh. You may be thinking, okay, a business, what's that about? Am I going to start charging? Well, no, and yes, at the same time. I'm not going to charge, I'm st it's still going to be a free service. So the thousand and eighty recordings that are on my website, they're all free. They're still going to be free. But I will be making some extra recordings, premium recordings that will be for sale. I'm looking to be making some courses that will be for sale to buy and also some books probably ebooks to start with that will be available to you know, to download so you know there will the free stuff will still be here I'm not stopping that and I've got no intention of ever stopping that But what's good about the, by offering things to buy, like maybe merchandise even, you know, uh, I was think I'd quite like to do a calendar, like a yearly calendar with Andre on there, pictures of him. And maybe t-shirts with pictures of Andre. I guess, you know, maybe, but the main thing is so that I get to the point that I'm not unemployed anymore. So instead of going and getting a job where I have to be at work at a certain time and, you know, I have to get told what to do and just like anyone else and I have done for 30 years. But instead of that, being self-employed means that if I have uh, a bit of a low week or a bit of a low day, I don't have to do anything. If I need to stay in bed for a week, I stay in bed for a week. And I still have money coming in from the website. You know, those e-books are for sale. We're still, I still get sales overnight when I'm in bed. You know, so I won't be so reliant on 
being at a certain place at a certain time. Because when I was self-employed as a counsellor, I had a chest infection and I was ill for 10 days. Just standard, you know, but I couldn't work. It took me, and I didn't get paid because I didn't work, it took me about three months to get back out of that, to get out of that debt that I got into just for those 10 days. It was, you know, because I was earning so little. So at least this time, I'm not relying on being somewhere, you know, for a certain amount of hours. Um, of course, that could happen in the future if I start doing group sessions. And I've even thought about getting or looking into voiceover work, but I don't know. So I've looked into it, but it doesn't seem to be a clear route into it. Unless you're famous, then, you know, it's a lot easier, but I'm not sure how to kind of do that. So if anyone operates a voiceover agency and would like to contact me, please do. I think that'd be quite cool. What else? There's the... Yeah, I just... I like the idea of the freedom of being able to earn a living, but also because it's online, I can be anywhere in the world and run the business as long as I've got an internet connection and I have to quite like the idea of that of being somewhere like on a I don't know maybe a, a cruise I have to be earning a bit of money to do that but just I think it'd just be nice to be able to just go somewhere go on holiday or go and just Especially if I was going to maybe write a book and would like to go somewhere different, rent a cabin out some, you know, or stay somewhere near the sea for a couple of months. I'm talking about in the future, not, not unless I could take Andre with me. There's got to be some ferret friendly places. I'd like to take him. He's never been on the beach, I don't think. Or has he? No. Or has he? I don't think he has. God, imagine him on the beach. He doesn't like water. Imagine what it'd be like. Just with all that water. I don't think he'd be too pleased so that's the idea and there's also money from advertising that will come in and as the podcasts grow the more money will come in from that as well over time and So it'll take a while before it'll take a while before I even cover the costs of running this uh, free service. But it'd be it'd be nice to be able to offer some you know downloads for people to pay for. Just be interesting to see, you know. I know it's that uh, I've had people I've had a lot of people love to be negative towards what I do you know family and friends and they sort of say well why would anyone pay for something if it's if you're giving it for free yeah, but it would be a different thing anyway 
I phoned up the benefits place and they said to me basically you have can't work over 16 hours you can only work up to 16 hours basically 15 hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds that's it that's the limit I said okay but how do I provide proof of that because I won't be working for someone else and he said well you probably just have to make a note of the hours that you do and what you do I said okay I can do that and then he said you can only earn a certain amount of money if it goes above the one I think it's 131 a week your benefits stop instantly I was like what it's So, but it's kind of I don't know what to do with that you know that information it's like okay well what if I have a really good week and then nothing for three months you know so I don't know I'm going to have to figure a way around it but I'll, I'm going to get advice I'm just going to open this letter This is the so this the man said I'll send you a form out. The thing is I think when I was told to phone him up I was supposed to just be quite anonymous. I thought just phone him up, say can you give me some advice and that was it. But before the person would even speak to me they had to ask loads of questions, who I was National insurance number, telephone number, address, all that stuff. So, and now they've written on my file on the computer that I'd that I was considering doing uh, being self-employed or doing you know permitted work. I mean, the word permitted is quite important in that. I think. So this is the form I got through. It's from the Department for Work and Pensions. It's called the PW1ESA 04 slash 19. It's permitted work. So I'm going to read it to you. It's not, it's not many pages really. It's only four pages or five pages. First of all it says, if you need this questionnaire in Braille large print or audio please call 0800 169 0310 so they've written down if you need this questionnaire in braille I'll, I'll, I'll skip that bit there I'll just go to the large print if you see someone saying what does that say? I can't see that word. Wish it was in large print. If you need this questionnaire in Braille, someone who needs it in Braille are not going to be able to see that, are they? To write the number to with a telephone number. Uh, calls to O eight hundred numbers are free from landlines and mobiles. Please read these notes carefully. This is in bold. They contain information about permitted work and what you must do. Okay, you must fill in and send back this questionnaire if you do any work. If you have already started work, you must send your first wage slip with this questionnaire. So that doesn't count for me because I've not started any work and I haven't done any so I don't have to worry about that. But I need to keep it in case I do. 
So the next, this is the headline. What is permitted work? Permitted work can help you learn new skills, help build your confidence, and help you start thinking about types of work you could do. If you have a disability, illness, or health condition, you may be able to do some work and keep your payments and national insurance credits for the following benefits. Okay. Employment and Support Allowance, ESA, which is what I'm on. Incapacity Benefit, IB, which I don't think even exists anymore, I'm not sure. And Severe Disability. A severe disablement allowance, SDA. No, I'm not on that. Permitted work lets you. Like got these bullet points. Well, not bullet points, but the like little black circles, rather than numbers. Work for less than sixteen hours each week. Earn up to one hundred and thirty-one pound fifty pence every week after tax why do they put after tax when you wouldn't get taxed on that amount you don't start paying tax do you earn 200 pound was basically 10,000 pound a year I think so you wouldn't pay tax on 131.50 would you Unless they class the benefits as earnings. Oh. And the next one is get your normal amount of benefit. So you can still get normal amount of benefit and the £131.50 is extra that you can keep. Build up your skills and experience. Do voluntary work. And it says there is no limit on how many hours a week you can do voluntary work for. Now the next bit is what you need to do. Write in black ink and use capital letters. I was clever here. So they've got the word black ink in black like bold and the, the word capital the words capital letters are in capital letters very clever read this questionnaire carefully and make sure you fill in and this is uh, again in kind of bullet bullet points part one and two, these must be filled in by everyone. Part three, only needs to be filled in if you are doing supported, permitted work. Your support worker or person supervising you will fill this part in for you. Part four. You must sign and date this section before you send it to Job Center Plus. Send the questionnaire back in the free post envelope we have sent you or post it to the address at the top of any ESSA letter we have have sent you. Please do not take this questionnaire into your job centre plus office. If you need help filling in the questionnaire, you can ask a friend, 
relative, carer or support worker to help you. Call the Job Centre Plus. It's like, who wants to be a millionaire, isn't it? I'd like to phone a friend, please. Call Job Centre Plus on the number. We can arrange for someone to talk you through the questions over the phone. Oh, there's no... Uh... Ah, so with bullet points, you don't need a, a full stop at the end of the sentence. Is that right? Just going to have a little quick drink of... Uh... Drinky stuff. Okay, so the next page. This is page two. Supported permitted work. Your professional support worker must fill in part three of your reply if you are doing supported permitted work. By supported permitted work, we mean work that is supervised by someone because you have a disability illness or health condition. The supervisor is normally employed by a public or local authority or a voluntary organisation. This could be work done in the community or in a sheltered workshop. It also includes work as part of a hospital treatment program. There is no limit on how many hours you can do supported permitted work for and you can earn up to £131.50 every week after tax. So you can do more hours, as many hours, but it's still limited to that amount of money. So the next bit is how your earnings may change your benefit. If you do permitted work, it will not change your benefit or your right to a national insurance credits. Expenses will not normally change your benefit if you get them as part of the job. By expenses, we mean money paid to you by your employer that is not part of your wage. Okay, I suppose that would be oh, I says it however some expensive such is some expenses such as travel to and from work will be regarded as earnings. To find out about expenses, ask the office dealing with your benefit. And the next bit how your earnings may change the amount of tax you pay. If you start permitted work, you may have to pay tax on your extra income. We will let HM Revenue and Customs, HMRC in brackets, know when your permitted work has been agreed. HMRC will work out if you should pay tax. Council tax reduction. So that's interesting though, isn't it? Because someone might think, oh, I'm going to pay tax. So they earn a hundred and... I don't know, let's say £150, thinking that, you know, they're going to get £20 tax taken off, so there'll be 
under the amount that they're allowed to earn and then the revenue and customs decide that they don't need to pay tax which means they've earned too much and they lose their benefits ah. council tax reduction you should contact your local authority before starting permitted work this is so that you can find out if your council tax reduction will change attending benefit related assessments and appointments with a work coach you do not need your doctor's approval or to have a medical check before you do permitted work but you must still go to any benefit related assessments and appointments with a work coach that we ask you to while you are getting benefit if you do not go to a benefit related assessment or appointments with a work coach you may lose benefit payments more information if you want more information about permitted work or want to download another copy of this form please visit www.gov.uk so this is your reply about me it's just basic stuff really So the first form to fill in is about you. The next form, not you, but me. You know, a person filling the form in. And there's someone else is filling it in for someone else. Part two is about the work you are starting or have started. Part, the next bit is about the work you are starting or have started continued. Part three, supported permitted work. Your professional support worker must fill in this part. A professional support worker is someone who works for a public body or voluntary organization and organizes work for people with disabilities, illnesses or health conditions. The support worker must provide ongoing and regular support and supervision over the work you are telling us about. Ah. And the last page is part four declaration. I declare I have read and understood the notes at the front of this form the information I have given on this form is correct and complete I understand I must report all changes in my circumstances promptly and by failing to do so I may be liable to prosecution or face a financial penalty and it says I will phone blah, 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 or write to the office that pays my benefit to report any change in my circumstances. If I give a false or incorrect information or fail to report changes in 
my circumstances promptly, I understand that my benefit may be stopped or reduced and any overpayments may be recovered. In addition, I may be... I also understand the department may use the information which it has or may get in the future to decide whether I am titled blah, blah, blah. That's the whole thing. And I'll be honest with you. I really am honest, but on this occasion I'll be honest. It's kind of put me off a bit, <laughs> really. I think I might just just continue doing what I'm doing. I don't know. I had this big enthusiasm before I went to the meeting. And then I phoned up the benefit place and I just felt my energy draining out through the phone. Especially listening to the music as I was waiting. And anyone that's ever phoned up the uh, benefits place and knows what I'm talking about. There's that sound that should just that song that no one ever wants to hear again. Oh. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll see. Either way, I'll continue to make recordings and do my thing, work on the website, which I've been doing today, although it was quite strange because my sleep has just been a bit weird because staying up, I woke up at three o'clock on Wednesday morning after trying to go to bed even though I wasn't tired and then I stayed up and went to this meeting and I got home and I didn't really go to bed and I stayed up again until I think it was about midnight and I just crashed down on the bed and I woke up at nine in the morning which is the complete opposite to what I normally do. So it's my uh, my sleeping clock's gone a bit out of whack because I'm used to sleeping during the day. But at least it's quiet now. At least Andre's gone back to sleep. He's a little, such a little monkey. He really is. Oh dear. Well that's it really. That's the end of another thing. That form wasn't quite as boring as I expected. But I did learn something new. So I'm going to go now. And I'll speak to you. Next time. Take care. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love bye